Welcome to the program. The topic selected for the program is Psychological Basis of Human Mental Life Functions of Human Endocrine System. The objectives set for the present lecture are to have an understanding of the human endocrine system, to understand the role played by various hormones in human body, to understand the psychological basis of human mental life with special reference to human endocrine system. Dear students, let's understand the endocrine system first. The endocrine system is the second great communication system. It's not a part of nervous system, but it is still essential for communication throughout the body. The brain structure known as the hypothalamus connects these two important communication systems. It's made up of a number of ductless glands that pour chemicals called hormones directly into the bloodstream. These chemicals are carried throughout the body where they affect internal activities and behavior. By regulating the functions of organs in the body, these glands help to maintain the body's homeostasis. The endocrine system is mainly composed of the hypothalamus, pituitary gland, pancreas, thyroid gland, adrenal glands, pineal glands, and the gonads, that is testes and ovaries. Each gland secretes one or more hormones in the bloodstream for the purpose of growth, metabolism, development, and even regulation of emotions. Let's have a detailed look. First, the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is considered the relay center of endocrine system. It secretes hormones that stimulate other endocrine glands to release their own hormones. The hypothalamus is a part of the brain located superior and anterior to brain stem and inferior to the thalamus. It serves many different functions in the nervous system and is also responsible for the direct control of the endocrine system through the pituitary gland. The hypothalamus contains special cells called neuroscretory cells, neurons that secrete hormones which include first thyrotropin releasing hormone, next growth hormone releasing hormone, next growth hormone inhibiting hormone, then gonadotropin releasing hormone, then corticotropin releasing hormone, next oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone. Number second gland is the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is a small pea-sized lump of tissues connected to the inferior portion of the hypothalamus of the brain. It's also known as the master gland. The pituitary gland secretes the most number of hormones out of all the members of the endocrine system. In particular, the term master gland applies to the anterior pituitary gland as it releases many hormones in the bloodstream to influence the activity of body organs as well as other glands in the endocrine system. So the posterior pituitary. The posterior pituitary gland is actually nervous tissue or neuroscretory cells which create two hormones, oxytocin which triggers uterine contractions during childbirth and the release of milk during breastfeeding. And next, antidiuretic hormone, which prevents water loss in the body by increasing the reuptake of water in the kidneys and reducing blood flow to sweat glands. Then anterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary gland is the true glandular part of the pituitary gland. The anterior pituitary produces six important hormones. First, adrenocorticotropin hormone, which stimulates the adrenal cortex, the outer part of the adrenal gland, to produce its hormones. Next, follicle-stimulating hormone, 
which stimulates the follicle cells of the gonads to produce gametes like ova in females and sperm in males. Luteinizing hormone which stimulates the gonads to produce the sex hormones estrogens in females and testosterone in males. Next, human growth hormone which affects many target cells throughout the body by stimulating their growth, repair and reproduction. Next, prolactin which has many effects on the body, chief of which is that it stimulates the mammary glands or the breasts to produce milk. Third is the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is a butterfly shaped gland located at the base of neck and wrapped around the lateral sides of the trachea. The thyroid gland produces three major hormones. First, calcitonin which functions to reduce the concentration of calcium ions in the blood by aiding the absorption of calcium into the matrix of bones. Then triiodothyronine that is T3 and thyroxine T4. The hormones T3 and T4 work together to regulate the body's metabolic rate. Next is the parathyroid gland. The parathyroid gland are four small masses of glandular tissues found on the posterior side of the thyroid gland. The parathyroid glands produce the parathyroid hormone which is involved in calcium ion homeostasis. Next is the pancreas. Pancreas is a large gland located in the abdominal cavity. The pancreas is considered to be a heterocrine gland as it contains both endocrine and exocrine tissue. The endocrine cells of the pancreas make up just 1% of the total mass of the pancreas and are found in small groups throughout the pancreas called islets of Langerhans. Within these islets are two types of cells, alpha and beta cells. The alpha cells produce the hormone glucagon which is responsible for raising blood glucose levels. The beta cells produce the hormone insulin, which is responsible for lowering blood glucose level after a meal. Then gonads. The gonads, like ovaries in the females and testes in males, are primary parts of the reproductive system. Testes. The testes are a pair of ellipsoid organs found in the scrotum of males that produce the androgen and testosterone in males after the start of puberty. Testosterone has effects on many parts of the body including the muscles, bones, sex organs and hair follicles. Then ovaries. The ovaries are a pair of almond shaped glands located in the pelvic body cavity lateral and superior to the uterus in females. The ovaries produce the female sex hormones progesterone and estrogens. Progesterone is most active in females during ovulation and pregnancy where it maintains appropriate conditions in the human body to support a developing fetus. Estrogens are a group of related hormones that function as the primary female sex hormones. Then adrenal glands. The adrenal glands are a pair of roughly triangular glands found immediately superior to the kidneys. The adrenal glands are each made of two distinct layers, each with their own unique functions, the outer adrenal cortex and inner adrenal medulla. First the adrenal cortex. The adrenal cortex produces many cortical hormones in three classes, glucocorticoids, mineralocorticoids and androgens. Glucocorticoids have many diverse functions including the breakdown of proteins and lipids to produce glucose. It also helps to reduce inflammation and immune response. 
mineralocorticoids, as their name suggests, are a group of hormones that help to regulate the concentration of mineral ions in the body. Androgens such as testosterones are produced at low levels in the adrenal cortex to regulate the growth and activity of cells that are receptive to male hormones. In adult males, the amount of androgens produced by the testes is many times greater than the amount produced by the adrenal cortex, leading to the appearance of male secondary sex characteristics. Then, adrenal medulla. The adrenal medulla produces the hormones epinephrine and norepinephrine. Both of these hormones help to increase the flow of blood to the brain and muscles to improve the fight or flight response to stress. These hormones also work to increase the heart rate, breathing rate and blood pressure while decreasing the flow of blood to and function of organs that are not involved in responding to emergencies. Then the thymus. The thymus is a soft triangular shaped organ located in across the trachea and bronchi, posterior to sternum. The thymus produces hormone called thymosine that helps to train and develop T lymphocytes during fetal development and childhood. The T lymphocytes produced in the thymus go on to protect the body from pathogens throughout a person's entire life. Then pineal gland. The pineal gland is a small pine cone shaped mass of glandular tissue found just posterior to the thalamus of the brain. The pineal gland produces the hormone melatonin that helps to regulate the human sleep-wake cycle known as the circadian rhythm. Now students, let's have a look over the types of hormones. First, the gonadal steroids. Gonadal steroids, including those produced by the testes and ovaries, were among the first to be identified and implicated in behavior. In addition, the adrenal cortex also produces steroid hormones. The major gonadal steroids are progestins, androgens, and estrogens. The second category is the adrenal steroids. Hormones synthesized by the adrenal cortex are typically characterized as either glucocorticoids, regulating glucose metabolism, or mineralocorticoids, regulating mineral balance. Third one is the peptide hormones and neurotransmitters. A vast number of hormones and neurotransmitters are synthesized from simple structural units including chains of amino acids. Among the amino acid based hormones are comparatively large protein molecules such as prolactin, growth hormone and insulin and shorter chain of amino acids which may form peptide hormones such as oxytocin and vesuprosine. Protein-based hormones are essential for metabolism, growth, and some components of reproduction. However, evidence for specific influence of these compounds on human behavior is limited. A variety of other peptides such as corticotropin-releasing hormone, gonadotropin hormone-releasing hormone, and the endogenous opiates such as beta endorphin also influence behavior because they have been extensively implicated in human behavior it's helpful to describe a subset of better known neurotransmitters now the history of the study of hormonal influence on human behavior human behavior is influenced by many factors among these are hormones or other chemicals produced by various tissues or glands throughout the body. Among the endocrine organs, the testes are unique because they are suspended in a tissue pouch outside the body cavity. The testes can be felt and these organs are vulnerable to physical insults, either deliberate or accidental. The effect of castrations were described by Aristotle or 300 years BC. 
removal of testes or castration as a form of punishment or tribute dates to antiquity. In 1849, Arnold Bethold conducted the first systematic experiment in this field, now recognized as the beginning of experimental endocrinology. Bethold removed the testes of chicken, noting that following castration males no longer stooted, crowd, or are tempted to mate. Then Claude Brown Sigward, 1889, a renowned physiologist, used himself as a subject in the first published experiment on the effect of testicular extracts. Brown Squared, motivated by his own experiences with aging, reasoned that the testes were involved in producing traits associated with youthful vigor. Now, dear students, let's have a look over the types of behavior that can be influenced by hormones. Behavioral endocrinologists have focused their attention on sexual, parental, and aggressive behaviors, describing various relationships between the gonadal steroids and their behaviors. Most research in these areas has been done on laboratory rodents and especially in domestic rats. The selection of rodents as the primary model for behavioral endocrinology has influenced our expectation regarding the nature of hormonal influence on human behavior. Let's understand first the sexual behavior. First, female sexual behavior. Surgical removal of ovary eliminates female sexual behavior in most rodents and treatment with Estrogen and progesterones can produce levels of sexual receptivity that closely resemble those seen in a gonadally intact estrous female. Studies of female sexual behavior in both humans and non-human primates have tended to examine changes in behavior as a function of the menstrual cycle or as a function of the treatment with estrogen or progesterone. Thus, as expressed by Valen in 1990, in rodents, both the ability and the desire to mate are hormone dependent, while in primates, female have the ability to engage in sexual behavior in the absence of hormones, although sexual motivation or desire tend to vary as a function of the menstrual cycle. The follicular stage of the menstrual cycle is typically associated with comparatively high levels of sexual behavior. Estrogen production declines during the menopause and some but not all women experience postmenopausal decline in sexual activity as per McCoy in 1992. During the menstrual cycle, progesterone is secreted at the time of ovulation and continues to be elevated throughout most of the luteal or post-ovulatory phase of the menstrual cycle. However, longer exposure to progesterone are primarily inhibitory and there are reports of inhibited sexual activity and desire during the luteal phase of menstrual cycle. Removal of the adrenal glands and thus Adrenal androgens has been associated with an inhibition of the sexual behavior in both humans and primates. Oxytocin is released during orgasm in both females and males of several species. It may also play a role in sexual satiety. Then the male sexual behavior. In most mammals, Intact gonads are a prerequisite to the onset of male sexual behavior. The expression of male sexual behavior is rare prior to puberty. However, once a male has become sexually active, removal of the testes does not produce an immediate cessation or mounting or intermission. The effect of androgen on the male sexual behavior is most easily documented in the normal adults who have experienced a decline in androgen and subsequent testosterone replacement therapy, although androgens are important for male sexual behavior. Next is the aggression. First, male aggression. 
sex differences in the expression of aggression are well documented and aggression may increase around the time of puberty. In addition, castration long has been used to manipulate tameness or docility in domestic animals. These observations have led to the hypothesis that testicular secretions play a causal role in aggression. In general, in animals, castration is associated with reduction in aggression and androgen replacement with increased aggression. Then female aggression. Hormonal influences on aggression in women have been studied only infrequently. In adolescent studies, within the context of their family, higher levels of estradiol and a weak androgen have been correlated with the incidence of aggressive behavior, such as angry responses towards parental authority. The effect of the estrogen treatment in hypogonadal girls also support the hypothesis that exposure to estrogen may increase some forms of aggressive behavior. Next is the parental behavior. In mammals, maternal behavior is typically observed at approximately the time of birth and may be demonstrated prior to parturition. The hormonal events of pregnancy, including exposure to high levels of estrogen and progesterone, and a subsequent dramatic prepartum decline in progesterone and increase in oxytocin and prolactin are associated with both maternal responses and lactation. However, hypotheses regarding hormonal causes of parental behavior are confounded by the fact that apparently normal parental behavior is observed in virgin females. Thus, the experience of pregnancy and birth are not essential for parental behavior. Various hormonal cocktails that approximately mimic the hormonal events of pregnancy and birth can facilitate the onset of maternal behavior in virgin females. Estrogen treatment generally hastens the onset of maternal behavior. Progesterone treatment followed by a cessation of progesterone also contributes to the onset of pup-directed behaviors. The adrenal hormone cortisol has been associated with maternal behavior. High levels of cortisol were correlated with positive maternal behavior and attitudes. Cortisol levels also were positively correlated with positive responses to odors from infants suggesting a role for cortisol in sensory processes. Oxytocin has been termed the hormone of mother love. Oxytocin production during breastfeeding is correlated with personality traits and behavior generally associated with parental behavior. Next is the steroids and cognitive functions. Sex steroids also have been implicated in many other components of mammalian life, including learning and memory, and especially verbal fluency and spatial learning. Significant gender differences in spatial abilities have been reported in humans, and there are recent reports that androgen treatments can improve testable spatial abilities in women. In contrast, verbal communication may especially important to females and verbal skills actually decline during testosterone treatment. Conversely, when men are given estrogens, cognitive testing indicates a loss in the spatial skills and a concurrent improvement in verbal abilities. Next is the effect of steroids and their impact on emotional balances. A variety of kinds of evidences have linked emotional behavior to hormones. Two conditions, the menstrual cycle and the menopause, have been focus of a great deal of research on human behavior. Women often report fluctuation in mood states associated with the menstrual cycle, leading to the description of a complex of emotional and physical symptoms, described collectively as the premenstrual syndrome or PMS. 
cyclic mood fluctuations include anxiety and depression are commonly considered components of PMS. The midlife cessation of ovarian function known as the menopause has long been associated with emotional changes in some but not all women. Then the effect of steroids on behavior. Steroid hormones can affect many aspects of human behavior. Behavioral effects of androgens which prevent successful social interactions including androgen stimulated aggression might interfere with traits necessary for reproduction including successful pair bonding and parental care. Estrogen is an exceptionally potent hormone with effects in both males and females. Women generally live longer than men. In part, this is because estrogen is cardioprotective. In addition, estrogen is apparently protective against schizophrenia and depression. Estrogen also may reduce the risk for other cognitive dysfunctions including loss of verbal fluency and memory disorders including Alzheimer's disease. Estrogen is critical for mammalian reproduction with the regulatory roles in sexual and maternal behavior. In general, estrogen is associated with increased sociality. Dear students, we may conclude that the endocrine system is made up of a number of ductless glands that pour chemicals called hormones directly into the bloodstream. These chemicals are carried throughout the body where they affect internal activities and behavior. The endocrine system is mainly composed of the hypothalamus, pituitary gland, pancreas, thyroid gland, adrenal glands, pineal glands and the gonads that is testes and ovaries. Human behavior is influenced by many factors. Among these are hormones or other chemicals produced by various tissues or glands throughout the body. Although reproductive hormones including androgens and estrogens have been studied in some detail, remarkably few strong conclusions are possible. However, new studies implicating neuropeptides such as oxytocin and vesopressin in human behavior suggest physiological substracts that may offer insight into hormonal influence on human behavior. Dear students, I hope you understand the content and enjoy the program. Thanks for watching.